everyone and welcome back to the workbench. Today, as you can see, I'm going to be talking about a high point model C9 firearm. In this video, I'm going to give you kind of some first impressions. I have fired 75 rounds through this gun already, uh, but this really and truly is just kind of a first impressions video. I don't review a firearm until I've had a chance to shoot it quite a bit. So let's dive right in with the very first topic. Why does somebody buy a high point pistol? Cost. This firearm after shipping costs and transfer fees was $182. The manufacturing process is designed simply to keep costs down. All of these parts here are not machined uh, by a CNC machine or anything like that. There's nothing on here that screams difficult to make. Uh, and because of that, it's not expensive to do. Also, most firearms, when they're brand new, come shipped in a plastic case. Not the high point firearms, they come in a cardboard box. So now that we've talked about cost, let's talk a little bit about aesthetics. Um, how does it look? Well, I mean, it looks like a gun, I guess. Uh, it kind of looks like something out of maybe World War II in, um, you know, in Europe. It doesn't have contour lines that we are familiar with. What I mean by that is it doesn't look like a Glock. It doesn't look like a 1911. It doesn't look like a Springfield or a Smith & Wesson or anything else that's really on the market today. It has its own unique look. So having talked a little bit about it, let's get our hands on it here. Uh, as I said, I have fired 75 rounds through this gun and I'll do a, a more in-depth review of this firearm. This is more just first impressions. Uh, I will say that when you pick it up and you hold it, it's not uncomfortable to hold. It actually fits your hand rather well. And I was very surprised by that. All of the levers and, and whatnot are in the place that you would think they would be. Magazine release and safety, they're all where they should be. Um, the sights on it are nothing to write home about. You've got two orange dots in the rear and a yellow dot in the front, or at least that's what it looks like when you're getting a sight picture. But if you look, it's not actually a dot. It's a bar. And same thing in the back. These are square, they're not dots. So it kind of tricks your eye when you're holding it up. You expect to see dots, so that's what you see are dots. The trigger is god-awful. <laughs> uh, just first impressions. It's got a lot of creep to it. It's jumpy. As you can see, I'm trying to get a nice, smooth trigger press, and I just I can't do it. I cannot get a smooth trigger squeeze. Let's go ahead and reset the trigger here. I just, it's strange how bad that trigger actually is. Um, trigger reset. That's it. It's, it's Smith & Wesson M&P-ish with the fact that you can't really hear it. You can't really feel it. You just have to let it all the way out. So I think that's gonna to lead to a lot of slapping the trigger. The magazine holds eight rounds. It is incredibly difficult to load. Uh, it just, the way it's designed, again, cost in mind, and uh, it just doesn't have the same ability. It doesn't have a plastic follower. It's got a metal follower, and uh, the spring in it's a little different. I haven't figured out how to take the base plate off yet. I haven't looked up any videos to, on how to do it. I have tried to disassemble this firearm, and I say try because in order to disassemble it, you have to lock it to the rear and then punch out the roll pin back here. Well, when I tried to punch this roll pin out, it was actually hitting the frame on the other side. Uh, so I couldn't get the roll pin out. So I haven't cleaned this firearm. It came from the factory. I ran a bore snake through it to make sure there were no blockages and I wiped down the outside of the, uh, the grease. I wiped the grease off the outside. Other than that, I've done nothing to this gun other than put 75 rounds of ammunition through it. Um, this slide lock is also your safety, and when it's in the slide lock position, it's actually kind of difficult to get back there because you, you go to what you think is all the way back, and it doesn't engage. You actually have to push it just a little bit further in order for that slide lock to engage. Then when you drop it, it rides home. So there's really nothing, no problems there. The safety itself acts as a fully functioning safety. You can't do anything with it. You can't rack the slide, you can't pull the trigger, you can't do anything. Also, it has a magazine disconnect. 
it's supposed to have a magazine disconnect. As you can see, it just went click. If you watch, I'll put the magazine all the way in and I can pull the trigger, no problem. Once I rack it, it stays open because the empty magazine does a hold open. Run it home and you're not supposed to be able to pull the trigger. But if I squeeze really hard, I can get it to go off. And actually, that's not that hard. Um, I would say 15 pounds of pressure. So in terms of trigger squeeze, yes, that's a hard trigger squeeze. Um, but you can, if you just pull it quick and hard, you can get it to go off. The heaviest handgun I've ever owned was the Ruger P95. I don't remember exactly what that weighed in at off the top of my head, but I'll annotate that uh, down here right now. So, fully empty gun. Empty magazine, empty gun. Let's go ahead and put this on here and see what we clock in at. Now mind you, the P95 is down here. 31.85 ounces. So if we go to pounds, 1.99 pounds. This gun weighs in at almost two full pounds, completely unloaded. With the last round hold open on the magazine here, there's no slide release that you can hit that runs at home. So after you insert your new magazine with rounds in it, you would slide it in and then you have to do the slingshot effect. So it would look like that. You put a new magazine in and that's how you chamber the round. The grip on it, I mean, you can get a nice good grip on it. What I do find interesting is that when I grip it, um, my thumb, I usually run it along the frame. It's just how I grip the firearm. I get a nice good, you know, as much meat on the grip as I can, and then I run my thumbs along the side. Well, the difference is on this gun, that is the slide. So as you can see, as I fire the gun, my thumb is going to be riding on the slide. Now, I haven't found that to be a problem because this is nice and smooth. There's no sharp edges, even on the front. Uh, if it recoils all the way to the rear and then comes back forward, this is kind of beveled and rounded, so it doesn't hurt my thumb when it rides home. I'm not really sure what else to say about this firearm. Again, this was intended to be kind of a first impressions video. Like, I'll do a full review of this at a later date, but uh, yeah, the High Point Model C9. Inexpensive, ergonomically not bad, but it's got some quirks. I will continue to use this firearm, and if I see anything or notice anything or experience anything, I'll bring those to you in a full review that I'll be doing later on. If you have any questions or comments in the meantime, please feel free to leave those below. With that, I will say thank you all very much for watching. I'll talk to you again very soon.